Hey guys, my name is Jessie Mew, and welcome back to Stardew Valley. The holidays are officially in full swing around the farm, just like they are in real life too. The Feast of the Winter Star is actually tomorrow, so we only have one more day to find a present for Jazz. You guys have given me some pretty good ideas, so we'll get to that in just a moment. I even have a chest full of all sorts of gifts to give to everybody around the town too, so we have a lot of work ahead of us. But first, I thought maybe Jess could get into the holiday spirit a bit more. We have this Santa cap over here inside our special treasures chest. So we'll swap that out for our earmuffs. I believe Maple is actually wearing the earmuffs anyway, so we can change it up for the day. Now, of course, the very first gift is going to go to Sam. I'm not sure who he has as a secret partner for the Feast of the Winter Star, but it would be pretty funny if it ended up being us, wouldn't it? I wonder how hard it would be for him to keep that a secret. He doesn't seem like the type who would be too good at keeping those big gifts a surprise. Now as far as Jazz's gift goes, you guys said that she really seems to like both fairy roses and pink cakes. So unfortunately, if we have any fairy roses inside our flower shack, they're not ready to harvest just yet. But it just so happens that we have some spare pink cakes inside our fridge. So I thought this would be the perfect thing for us to use as her gift like a little holiday cake of some sort. And I definitely know she'll like that. What sort of kid wouldn't like a big giant cake all to themselves in the holidays? So as Sam goes off to tend to the house for the day, we are going to go out and try to find all of our friends in the town. It looks like we have some letters first. I'm guessing this is probably about the Feast of the Winter Star. Oh, Emily actually sent us a gift, a little sea urchin. That is adorable. Well, I'm guessing she's probably not our secret partner then, unless she's buttering us up before the big day. And this is a letter about the Feast of the Winter Star. Dear Jess, tomorrow is the Feast of the Winter Star. Did you get a gift for your secret friend, Jess? The feast starts at 9am in the town square. See you then from Mayor Lewis. Yep, we have our gift all picked out and ready, so we'll keep that tucked away inside our inventory. Maybe way over here so we don't lose track of it, and so we don't accidentally sell it off while we're doing our chores. I guess we could plop the sea urchin inside this chest for now. We don't want to sell Emily's gift right away after all. And now here's all of the presents that I've amassed for everybody in the town. Tons and tons of flowers, of course, because we know that quite a few people enjoy these. And they're pretty good quality too, so I think they'll be happy. We have some blueberry jellies. We have some ice cream. Some good old cold ice cream for a nice snowy day like this. And just in case cold isn't their style, we do have some coffee too. We have amethyst for people like Abby. We have emeralds for Penny perhaps. And even a little frozen tear for Sebastian. But we also have some of these artifacts for Gunther. I found a whole bunch of these dug up inside those worm piles. So I think he'll be happy if we donate those today. We have the void egg for Krobus too. Can't forget about our local sewer monster. And as for all of these secret notes... I thought they would make a pretty good gift to us. I have found so many of these things while working around the farm, so we'll have to read these first. And the maple syrup is for one very special delivery. If you guys remember a while back, one of the secret notes asked for maple syrup in the secret woods. So we're going to make a very big delivery of maple syrup there today. We'll see who's poking around and who's been wishing for this stuff all year long. Based on the secret note that we read, I'm still kind of betting that it's the hat mouse. It seemed to have the same sort of style. But with four of these notes to read, we better get to work, just in case they have any hints about what other people might like around the town. So let's start with secret note one. This is a page from Abigail's diary. Oh, so it's another things I love. I mean, granted, we kind of know what Abigail already likes, like the amethyst, for instance, but it would still be good to figure out the extra special secrets. Things I love. The smell of carved pumpkin, keeping an amethyst under my pillow, chocolate cake, the thrill of spicy eel, and the comfort of mom's blackberry cobbler. I like to eat. Ooh, blackberry cobbler? Is that what we actually used for the fair? I think we have an extra one inside our fridge. Was it the blackberry cobbler or the blueberry cobbler? It looks like it was actually the blackberry cobbler, so has she developed a taste for our special blackberry cobblers? I guess technically it's her mother's, and her mother's is probably a little bit better than ours. Your mother's home cooking is always the best, right? 
Well, let's go ahead and fill up Daisy's bowl, and then I think the next one we have to read is Secret Note 8. So let's see what's inside this thing. To Haley and Emily. Hope you two are doing well. We've sent your favorite gifts, pink cake and sunflowers for Haley, gemstones and wool for Emily, from Mom and Dad. How on earth did we end up with their parents' letter? That's awfully strange. I think I was finding these, like, inside the rocks and the trees. Well, not sure how it washed up on our farm, but that's pretty good information for us, because we definitely have gemstones and we definitely have sunflowers, too. We'll have to make sure that we give this one to Haley. So now we have Secret Note 9, Alex's Strength Training Diet, a complete breakfast, and a salmon dinner. I've learned to love this food. I can feel the protein. Well, that doesn't surprise me one bit. Unfortunately, I don't think we have either of these, so we can't really give Alex his favorite thing today. But maybe we could sneak an egg from the chicken coop so he could make it himself. And last but not least, we have Secret Note 21 which appears to be a puzzle of some sort. Is that maybe one of the bushes by the bridge? The one that leads toward the beach, maybe. I think that looks like the beach area. And it looks like we have to check this thing at a very specific time. Is that nearly 12.45 in the morning? So I guess there's probably a pretty good chance that we'll end up passing out outside of our house if we try to get this secret. But that's something that we're going to definitely have to keep in the back of our mind. So before we head out, I'm just going to very quickly check up on all of our animals, all of our flowers, of course. I wonder if anything else has grown? Nope, it looks like all of our flowers are still growing away inside their pots. I have harvested plenty of these in the meantime, though, which is why we have so many good quality flowers inside our inventory right now. I know that I planted some more of the fairy roses, but it doesn't look like they'll be ready for tomorrow, so it's a good thing that we had those pink cakes tucked away inside our fridge. They're going to make Jazz very, very happy. And now with one lovely egg from one of our chickens, we'll go ahead and take this gold star quality one. I'll probably come back and make sure that we pick up everything else once we're done giving our gifts around the town, because goodness knows it's going to take us a while to track everyone down. So let's go hop on Maple. Oh my goodness, we even have all of these jellies to pick up too? Oh Jess, you're going to have your work cut out for you when you get back. The holidays are always the busiest time of the year. Even now, I feel like there is way too much to get done, but there's always time for giving gifts to our friends. So let's start by heading down to the woods, because then we should be able to get to the secret forest before it gets too dark. I want to make sure we can see who's ever lurking around in those parts. But let's stop at Marnie's first. Do you think maybe she'll appreciate one of our jellies? Oh, and Shane is here as well, and even Lewis. Well, we might as well give them both some of this blueberry jelly. I think that Lewis will probably appreciate this too. Thanks, this is great. And one for you too, Marnie. Thank you. And I suppose we could always give a nice fresh coffee to Shane. We don't exactly have our hot peppers ready for you. I really should have grabbed a couple from our fridge, but I hope you'll appreciate this anyway. Oh, he really seemed to like that. Probably because he's given up on his drinking, so I suppose some morning coffee would be a better treat. Now I wonder if we're going to see Jazz out here? Nope, it doesn't look like she's playing out in the snow today. But that's okay, maybe it's for the best. If we do see her, we will definitely give her one of the flowers that we have tucked away inside our backpack. But if she's not around, I suppose we should probably just try to steer clear. We don't want to make her too suspicious. So we have our maple syrup in hand. Let's see if this is going to trigger anything new. It looks like it might be, oh my goodness. Is that a bear? Oh yeah, I would be a little bit worried too, Jess. Oh, but it's kind of adorable. Um, it can talk? Hello, Mr. Bear. That smell, come closer. See, if a bear in the woods told me to come closer because it smelled something delicious, I don't think I would listen. Huh, it's not every day I get to speak to a human. Looks like you've got a little forest magic in you. Ah, uh, that's right, because of the wizard's special brew. So that's why we can talk to the forest animals too? I thought that was just for Junimos. Now, about my note. Did you bring the good stuff? Oh, look at that smug face. You bet we did, Mr. Bear. You must want this maple syrup. Oh, he devoured it. 
Oh, that smell. This is really sweet stuff. It's my favorite sauce. It makes me very happy. Look at those teeth, too. My goodness, Mr. Pear. You must be guzzling maple syrup all day long. Oh, is he gonna give us a little hug? Yeah, Jess is still a bit apprehensive. You've made a friend today, Jess. Oh, I guess it's a good thing to have a bear friend, maybe. It's better than having a bear enemy, at least. I've got something special I want to show you. Ooh, is it something in the bushes? Maybe he's hiding special treasures in the bushes, just like that note that we found. The bear left you with his special knowledge. Salmonberries and blackberries are now worth three times the gold. Whoa. Oh my gosh, did he show us, like, how to find the best quality berries then? Oh, that is so cool. Well, we might as well gather up the holly over here. No, no, Jess, don't go eat in that. We'll leave the slimes be so they can enjoy the holiday season too. But we'll see if maybe there's some more treasures inside these wiggly worm patches. I've had some pretty good luck inside these so far. Not so much today, unfortunately, but at least the holly will offer us some extra gold. So it seems like the bear has been living around here, right by old Master Cannoli. And you know, if I remember correctly, he was actually looking for the sweetest taste too. So it kind of makes sense that, that the bear has been lurking around these parts. I guess this is just where- oh jeez. This is where those with a bit of a sweet tooth prefer to roam. Okay, little slimes, I'm trying to be nice. I'm trying to let you enjoy your holiday, but this is not gonna fly. Yeah, let's get out of here before we have to end up using our sword after all. We'll leave you to it, little ones. We have quite a bit of work to do still, and it's already 3 p.m. So we still have all of our flowers in our inventory. Oh my gosh, and it's pretty much chock full too. Let's see if we can shuffle things around a little bit so we have all of the important stuff right out in the open. Our flowers, our coffee, our amethysts, and our emeralds. I think that should be a pretty good selection. And most likely the people who are wandering around the main portion of town will like all of these things anyways. Ah, uh, that might be where we run into Jazz. I wonder if she's actually doing her schooling with Penny today. Penny and Vincent. Well, I would imagine that they would both probably like some ice cream too. Like even though it's super cold outside, Vincent would never say no to ice cream. Oh, and Emily, oh, we wanted to thank you for giving us that lovely gift today. Here's one of the amethysts. This gift is fabulous. Thank you so much. And let's see if we can find anybody else in the town square. Nobody is too willing to stand outside in the cold, it seems. I guess we'll have to go inside. Let's go into Pierre's. Let's see if anybody is inside here. There you are, Jody. Buying some food for the Feast of the Winter Star? Well, we have a little flower that we would like to give you. We know that Sam loves summer spangles, so maybe his mom would too? Thank you. This makes my day really special. I wonder if that's why Sam likes the summer spangles so much. Maybe they remind him of his mother. I don't see Carolyn around here, unfortunately, so it looks like she must be out today. But I suppose we could always offer a gift up to Pierre. Now granted, our gifts to Pierre never seem to go very well. Should we just try a coffee? A plain old morning coffee? That's very kind of you. I like this. Alright, excellent. Maybe he needed a little pick-me-up. I mean, it is 5pm. I guess it's not really morning coffee anymore. And speaking of which, is Harvey still in? Oh no, it's locked! Oh, he closed his clinic at 3 p.m., probably going home or tucking himself away so he can enjoy the holiday too. Well, at least we can offer up this fresh egg to Alex. It's not exactly what we saw on your note, but it seems to be something he enjoys nonetheless. And if we could leave you there for just a moment, Maple, I want to see if maybe Evelyn is inside. There you are. Let's give her one of these blue jazz flowers. Oh my, it looks wonderful. That's very kind of you. And now we didn't have any of the leaks for George. That's his favorite thing, of course. But I guess we could try a coffee for him too. Do you think he would like that? Yes, he loved it. Thanks. Excellent. So we didn't make a fool of ourselves in front of George for the holidays. That is always a good sign. George is very, very picky. He likes us a lot now, but he was hard to get in the good side of before. Oh my goodness, and wait, Harvey. Wait just a second. I have a fresh coffee for you too. I know it's so late, but you love this stuff, right? I didn't want you to think we forgot. Oh no, and I just realized. 
Oh, it's so late that we weren't able to donate all of these artifacts to Gunther. Well, we're gonna have to make sure that we do that after the Feast of the Winter Star then. Well, at least everybody is going inside the saloon too, so it should be pretty easy to spread our gifts around now. We have a Willy over here who I'm sure would enjoy some fresh coffee too. This looks great, thank you. You can take that out to sea, perhaps, to keep you nice and warm. Now, Leah, what could we give to her? Maybe just one of the flowers? And I'm sure that Pam would love one of these, too. We'll give Pam this purplish one, because she seems to like the color purple. And we'll give Leah this red one to match her hair. This is a really nice gift, thank you. Now, as for Gus... We'll go ahead and give him one of these blueberry jellies, too. He always does prefer the food-related items. And then that might be it for everybody inside the saloon. I can't imagine that anybody would be over in the extra room. This is usually reserved for the weekends when everybody is inside the saloon, it seems. That's where Sebastian goes and Abigail. Now, there's a couple of people that we haven't seen today either. And I'm sure they're all tucked inside by now. They're probably heading home so they can get ready for the Feast of the Winter Star. But there's a one more person that we need to go see. Oh, and maybe that just so happens to be Penny? Coming home after walking the kids to their doors, perhaps? Oh, there's that glitch again. But we know that she loved it. She gave us that little heart. So she seemed pretty happy with her emeralds. Yeah, let's make sure that we pull out our void egg and let's go down to the sewers next. Oh, I almost missed you, Abby. Oh, standing in the graveyard again, looking over these gravestones. Well, here's a little amethyst for you. And then we're going to sneak ourselves into the sewers down there. I wonder if Abby knows that we have the key. She would probably feel a little bit jealous, don't you think? She always seems to want to go on adventures, and I would have loved to bring her on one, but I don't think the option is open to us. So let's see if Krobus is still waiting inside the sewers as always. There you are, my little friend. I'm not sure if you celebrate the holidays, but we don't want to leave you out. We want to make sure that you're happy too. This is an amazing gift. For my people, it is a great honor to receive something like this. Well, we're glad that we could make your day, Krobus. I wonder if perhaps we should fast travel over to the mines, too, just to say hello to the dwarf. I'm guessing he probably doesn't celebrate the holidays either, but we do have this extra amethyst in our pocket, and we don't often get the chance to talk to him. So very, very quickly, since we still have a little bit of extra time, we'll scoot on over to the fast travel, and we'll see if he's still waiting around. I don't think the dwarf goes in at any special time. He's not like the other people around town who need to get some sleep, I guess. Let's see if he's still waiting. I'm not sure if we've ever poked our heads in so late before. I hope he's not going to get too scared either. There you are, little guy. I have this nice big purple amethyst for you too. Hey, I really love this stuff. You can find great things in the mines. Yeah, he's one of the people around town, or one of the creatures even, who has the least amount of hearts with us. So it would be a good idea for us to get to know him better. That's why I want him to know that we haven't forgotten about him out here. He's a little bit out of the way, but he's still on our mind. So we didn't exactly give all of the gifts that we wanted to today, but I suppose we could always tuck away the rest of them inside this chest. And even though the gifts will be a little bit late, we'll make sure that we still give Haley her sunflower, Gunther all of those artifacts, Sebastian his frozen tear, all the good stuff. All of our animals are fast asleep now too, so we'll have to try to tiptoe around them very, very quietly. In the last episode, we actually unlocked the blue chickens that Shane is raising, so I'm really looking forward to getting one of those still. You guys have mentioned that when we go to purchase the chickens, if it's going to be one of the blue ones, I guess it'll give us a special message. So there is a possibility that we could try to get a blue chicken that way. Maybe back out of the menu each time if it doesn't say specifically that it's going to be blue. We'll have to give that a try next time because we're a little bit too busy today. And I doubt Marty will be open during the Feast of the Winter Star. It starts bright and early anyways. So we better tuck ourselves into bed and get ready for the big celebration tomorrow. Oh, I am so excited. I can't imagine... Oh my gosh! Who could possibly be our special partner this year? But Santa in the sky can only mean one thing. The holiday has officially arrived. So let's go, Jess. 
Let's get ready. We only have a couple of chores to do before we head off. And the Feast of the Winter Star will be starting at 9 a.m. So you only have a few hours as it is. It looks like Sam is busy cooking some breakfast, so let's surprise him with another one of his special little cactus fruits. I wonder if the cactus plants are going to be done growing today? It looks like they still have a little bit of growing to do, but sooner or later, Sam, you are going to have cactus fruits galore again, so we'll be able to replenish our supply before long. We'll go ahead and give these a little bit of extra water, and then let's see what it looks like outside today. Oh, a nice, beautiful winter morning. The perfect weather for an excellent feast. And now with all of our chores done, it looks like it's finally time for us to head out to the Feast of the Winter Star. So we're going to leave you right here for today, Maple. You can relax inside your nice warm stable and munch on your hay. It's finally a day off for a horse. Oh, but not a day off for you, Pam. Surely she's going to be back. I'm sure she's just checking up on the bus stop because she would not want to miss this for the world, right? There she is, standing right next to Penny, as always. Hmm, I'm still upset I didn't win the ice fishing competition. Oh, sorry, Pam. Jeez, did we win that this year? It's been a while, but maybe we'll have to share the well. We did win it two years in a row, after all. At least Penny seems to be in much better spirits. And Willie is talking to Marlin? Oh, do you want to hear the legends of the Winter Star? I think we actually heard it last year, so we're going to say no thanks this time. I wonder if Marlin is the one sharing the story. Hey, good afternoon. Even Linus is joining in too. Oh, I love to see him so close to the celebrations. I wonder if you can actually get him as one of the special partners? I join in, but I don't think I'm welcome. Of course you are, Linus. I think everybody here would probably welcome him to the table too. Oh my gosh, Sam. He's spending time with his family. It looks like he's right next to his little brother, Vincent. I'm here for the gifts and cookies. Some of your mom's home cooking, I'm sure. Maybe she set up this entire table to help bring the family together. Gus is usually the one who sets up most of the food, but since we saw Jody in the shop the other day, I wouldn't be surprised if she had a bit of a role to play. Oh, hello. Oh, Alex looked a little bit sad for some reason. That's awfully strange. So many people seem happy here, but Alex, not so much. Oh my, aren't you cold, dear? It's freezing. A feast for some stupid star humbug. Well, we have the Scrooge of the festival, it seems. I hope there's a new camera for me under the spirit tree. Jess, what are you hoping to find on the spirit tree? A new watering can, a chuck of spiced meat, or a pair of stylish boots? We could probably go the practical route. A watering can would be great for the spring season. And with it just around the corner now, Jess is probably really thinking about all of those crops that she's going to have to water. All work and no play? That's not very fun. Well, sorry, Emily. She was probably hoping for, like, the stylish boots or something. That was probably, like, the worst thing we could have told her. I hope she's not actually our secret partner. Oh, could you imagine? She's probably so scared if she is. I'm thankful there was no medical emergencies this year. Very good thing to be thankful for, Harvey. Gus was just telling me about his artisan candy canes. Oh, I remember that from last year. It seems like nobody is too interested in his very, very extensive explanations. Even Elliot is trying to change the conversation. So we'll leave you to it, Gus. We'll sneak away and maybe try to get around to the other side of this table, because we've never talked to Kent before and I want to make sure that we can say hello to him, too. Can we sneak past all of these trees, around the saloon so we can get to him? There you are, Kent. Good afternoon, Jess, and happy feasting. Do you think maybe he's going to join in, too? Just like Linus? I wonder if he's going to exchange some gifts? Oh, and Jazz, are you peeking in the presents up here? Oh, we can give Jazz her secret gift right here, too. All right, well, we might as well. We have a lovely pink cake for you. Oh, so it's you? Ah, uh, pink cake, thanks. She seemed to love it. Did you see that giant heart? And it looks like... Oh my gosh, Pam is our partner this year? Oh my gosh, that is so sweet. All the times that we've taken her bus this year to go to the desert. Oh, I wonder what she got us. 
Hi, so I'm your secret gift giver this year. Well, open it. Ooh, what is it gonna be? Let's see. Oh, a ruby. Oh my gosh. How on earth did you manage to find a ruby, Pam? It's nothing fancy, really. A ruby is nothing fancy, but it's the best I could afford. Oh, Pam, you didn't have to go out of your way to find a ruby for us. I wonder if she actually has been poking around in the mines. Pam is a lot tougher than we give her credit for. Well, that is an excellent gift. We'll have to make sure that we tuck it away inside our special chest right next to the Nautilus shell that Pierre gave us last year. All of our most prized possessions. That is so cute, though. Thank you so much, Pam. I don't think that there's really anything else for us to do here. There's no special shops, and we've spoken to everybody before. Unless maybe the wizard is hiding around these parts? We haven't really seen him lately either, but just like Krabus and the Dwarf, he might not be too interested in these sort of celebrations. Yeah, I don't see any of the other special characters poking around. They're not hidden in any of the corners. So that might be the end of the Feast of the Winter Star. But that was a lot of fun. This is actually one of my favorite events inside the entire game, just because of that cute little gift-giving thing. So with that, Louis, I think we're ready to say our farewells. We'll sneak on back home so we can tuck all of our gifts away inside our chest and get ready for a brand new year on the farm. Now we have year three to look forward to. And if I remember correctly, there are some very special things underway. Not to mention, I actually have one more surprise to share with you guys. While I was preparing for the Feast of the Winter Star and all of those gifts that we wanted to give to our friends, Sam had a very important question to ask our little farmer. He wanted to know if we would like to start a family with him, and our farmer has said yes. So that means sometime at the beginning of next year, our farmer will finally be having a baby. So we're going to have to kick it into full gear and make sure that that nursery is in tip-top shape for our brand new family. Feel free to leave suggestions for baby names in the comments too, because I'm sure we're going to need those very soon. But for now, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Happy holidays, everyone!